We'll move on now to the next speaker, and I hope to welcome Professor Luigi Solbiati, who will be talking to us about percutaneous focal ablations. Professor Solbiati is a renowned expert in this field, and for many years he has established this treatment across the world, and we are very privileged today to welcome Professor Solbiati. And Luigi, please carry on and develop. Thank you. My, my topic uh, is a very dear topic for me because uh, uh, I started uh, using uh, uh, contrast ultrasound for the control of percutaneous focal ablations years and years ago. So in summary, I will talk briefly regarding the pre-ablation assessment of the target lesions with uh, COS the guidance of the ablation device into lesion undetectable or unconspicuously visualized on an enhanced ultrasound. Then the peri-procedural monitoring of ablation, including the real-time control of the ablation, so-called safety, uh, the residual the visualization of residual areas of unablated tumor with the possibility of uh, CUS-guided immediate retreatment, the detection of insufficient or inhomogeneous ablative margins, requiring, again, an immediate retreatment guided by contrast ultrasound, the immediate detection of complications. While I will not talk in my, in my presentation today regarding the follow-up of ablated tumors, because in most centers like mine, we use preferably uh, MRI or, or CT instead of uh, COS in this particular uh, section. This slide demonstrates how old is the beginning of the story, different from what Ernst Michael showed in, in, a moment ago. Uh, the control of ablations with CUS started, as I said, many years ago. This is a, an, a historical slide. In 1998, in my previous hospital, for the first time, we used uh, for, for the ablation of this uh, big hepatocellular carcinoma contrast ultrasound, and we realized immediately that there were no differences between contrast ultrasound and CT performed a few hours later in the, in the detection of the necrotic area versus the still viable area of the tumor. So at that time, we understood all the potential applications of contrast ultrasound in this field. And as you know, now in most guidelines for the use of contrast ultrasound, a specific chapter dedicated to the control of ablations is included. You see here different guidelines from different societies, each of them including a chapter regarding monitoring of ablations. So let's start with the pretreatment assessment. We can get from COS uh, many important uh, um, messages before starting the ablation. First of all, number and size of lesions, especially for lesions undetectable or partially visible with uh, B-mod sonography, in order to perform the so-called CUS targeted ablation. Uh, this is a case in which lesions are not almost visible on B-mode sonography, while they are clearly visible on contrast ultrasound. In this specific case, and one more, we see the lesion very well in the, in the fusion part of the, of the examination. This is uh, the CT control showing the hepatocellular carcinoma, but it is totally invisible, undetectable with B-mode sonography, injecting uh, some of you exactly in the location where fusion tells us that there is a lesion. We see clearly the, the lesion appearing so that we can stick immediately our antenna or our electrode into the target with the uh, possibility of ablation. Again, we can establish before starting the ablation the degree of enhancement, the homogeneity or non-homogeneity of the vascularity, and necrotic changes inside the tumor in order to compare, to uh, ideally compare pre- and post-treatment patterns. The margins, we can detect the possi possible infiltrations, relationships with surrounding structures uh, in order to define the appropriate treatment strategy, for example. We can, especially in metastatic lesion, uh, study very well before ablation the perilesional hypervascular area. Uh, we see here a lesion in which it seems that the size of the lesion is exactly this one, as we see on B-mode sonography. While injecting sonoview before starting, we see clearly 
that the, the most active area of the of metastasis is the part which is not visible here, which is the area of hyperemia as it, um, located at the periphery of the central necrotic part of the, of the tumor. In the photocellular carcinomas, in the pretreatment assessment, we can discover the presence of, a, of the tumor feeding vessel or vessels. And if we do that, and if we, if we locate that, it is extremely convenient to start the ablation from this area of the tumor. Uh, our treatment will be more, uh, more safe, more precise, and also quicker because we, it's, uh, we hit immediately the most important part of the entire tumor. Zones of local tumor progression or residual tumors following previous local regional treatments, always before treatment. You see, in an example, uh, adjacent to this uh, necrotic area from a previous ablation, there is a small apparent nodule. Injecting uh, a contrast agent just before, we see that we have this part of the, of the area uh, uptaking uh, the contrast agent and with a clear washout in the portal late phase. So this is the only active part of this uh, tumor uh, to be treated. Second point is the guidance of the ablation device into lesions not visualized or not well delineated with an enhanced sonography. And we, the, this allows to insert the, the electrode or the antenna or the, um, or the uh, cryo uh, probe where, when the target is optimally depicted. Another example of a lesion. If I show you this image, none would say that there is a lesion in this image here. But performing contrast ultrasound, we see immediately in arterial phase that there is an area of, uh, of enhancement peripheral with a central part, which is part in necrotic. At that point, we go, we go live, we repeat the injection, we locate exactly the center of the target, and we uh, insert our needle, our antenna, our electrode, exactly in the most precise central part of the tumor. Uh, it is well known that the effects of thermal ablation are almost the same for all the different modalities of ablation. Radio frequency, laser, microwaves, cryo, have all, almost all of them the same uh, effects. And uh, among them, the most important is the disruption of the vasculature, of the vascular supply of the, uh, of the tumor with, due to the coagulation necrosis which is provoked. Uh, this is uh, almost uh, in, in, initiated by the creation of gas. And then we have this phase here in which the gas disappears and we can appreciate with contrast the area of necrosis we have created. There are other modalities uh, which can be used, for example, uh, sonar elastography, thanks to the effects of dehydration, of stiffening and shrinking of the tumor. But this so far, today are less important than the disruption of the vascularity. So moving to the periprocedural monitoring ablation, first of all, we have to uh, select the right time to inject the contrast agent. We cannot inject uh, the contrast agent immediately after removing the electrode or the antenna because of the gas created by every treatment. We have to wait. Uh, in general, we wait five to eight minutes. When most of the gas is disappeared, we can uh, inject uh, uh, Sonovil. You see here a case. At this phase, we cannot inject. While waiting five, eight minutes, uh, we can inject and achieve this image. You can appreciate in this case, this is the same case, that uh, the diffusion of gas, the extension of the gas diffusion, overestimates the real amount of necrosis achieved. You see here that the size of this gas the diffusion seems much larger than the real size of the necrosis that COS shows, uh, shows us very clearly. Of course, we have to use the same system settings and same scan planes in pre-ablation and in post-ablation, in the post-ablation, in order to get our study eff efficient. And we have to compare the pre and post ablation images or movie clips achieved. Let's move to some examples. This is a 
small metastatic lesion up in the dome of the liver, very close to the diaphragm in a very difficult location. Uh, anyway, B-mode ultrasound can detect uh, the lesion, not very well, but, uh, but apparently very well. Uh, B-mod sonography does not depict so well, but contrast ultrasound depicts the lesion very nicely, and we now know exactly where is our target. At that point, we stick, uh, we insert our antenna, this is a microwave antenna, and apparently we have the sensation that the needle tip is exactly in the center of this area. And this is the result at the end of the treatment. But performing five, six minutes after withdrawing the antenna, the repeating the study with COS, we have the clear sensation that the lesion is almost the same. The treatment was performed in another area, out of the target. Uh, 90, if not the total amount of the, of the uh, lesion, is absolutely viable. We uh, check it immediately with the convin CT in the interventional room during the same session, and we have an excellent confirmation of the situation achieved with CUS. You see here the lesion viable on uh, contrast ultrasound, the lesion viable on uh, on convin CT, while the treatment has diffused elsewhere, apparently more cranially and more anteriorly to the target. At that point, we can immediately reintroduce the antenna uh, in a different location and recontrolling the lesion after treatment, we see a much wider area, which includes completely the previous area of viable tumor with a final confirmation achieved with contrast intensity. In this case, for example, we would have completely missed the target if we had not performed contrast ultrasound immediately after. So the very first assessment of the tumor response can be adequately performed using uh, contrast ultrasound. Um, I am showing you examples, most examples regarding liver, but uh, uh, in, a, in, in some minutes you will see that we can apply this uh, system to all the organs and all the type of lesions where we can use ablations. In this case, a protocellular carcinoma, immediately after we see that there are two areas of clear uh, hypervascularity in arterial phase suggesting non-treated area. We can immediately retreat. While in this case, starting from this small metastasis, the volume of necrosis achieved is absolutely sufficient, much larger with large margins all around. In this other case, this metastasis, at the first ablation, first treatment, the necrotic area achieved is too small exactly the same size of the metastasis and we know very well that this is not sufficient we have immediately to retreat and get at least this amount of necrosis at the end of the treatment uh, immediate correction of course at the end we check with ct or mri but uh, the control with contrast ultrasound immediately in the interventional room is absolutely mandatory i show you what we do every day the lesion Contrast ultrasound depicting very wide uh, area of necrosis, can beam CT immediately, demonstration of and confirmation of the result achieved, the same result of, of contrast ultrasound. 24 hours or 48 hours later, we can get also the final CT study to demonstrate the efficacy of the treatment and the lack of complications all around. You, you know that in the, uh, the recent review of the RESIST criteria, uh, the complete response to any kind of treatment of hypervascular lesions like hepatocellular carcinoma has been defined as the dis disappearance of any intratumoral arterial enhancement in all target lesions. And this is exactly where contrast ultrasound can be particularly useful. Uh, treating both uh, uh, hypo metastatic or hyper hepatocellular carcinomas, for example, lesions, uh, we very frequently, if not always, achieve minutes or hours after the treatment, this halo of hyperemia, which surrounds the necrotic area achieved. It, it is called perilegional hyperemia, exactly the same phenomenon uh, we can appreciate also on CT or MRI. And this is important because we have to differentiate this hyperemia 
from possible residual variable area areas of the tumor. The difference is that the hyperemia, when it is purely hyperemia and not a residual disease, it remains hyper-enhancing or maximum iso-enhancing also in portal and late phase, while, while the residual tumor becomes hypo-enhancing, as we know, for the washout in the portal and always in late phase. Let's move a moment to the problem of margins of ablation. Uh, from, uh, from years, uh, since uh, 1992, 1993, we have learned that a complete ablation, what we call the curative ablation of the A0, comparable to the R0 of the resection, uh, has to include the target completely with a homogeneous peripheral halo of treatment of, of surrounding normal parenchyma. Without that, the ablation would be not absolutely effective. But it is also important that this peripheral so-called safety halo is absolutely homogeneous and regular. It means that, that it must surround the lesion in all the points three-dimensionally, not excluding any part of the tumor. This is an efficient treatment. This is a partially efficient because this area is a severe risk of regrowing, while a treatment like that would, will fail completely because this area will immediately regrow after treatment. And uh, the importance of the safety halo is due to the report many years ago of the very frequent occurrence of microsatellitosis all around hepatocellular carcinomas, metastasis, and many other neoplastic diseases, very frequently also in small lesions. In 10% of HECs less than 2 cm, it means very small lesions, we may have microsatellitosis. In 22% of colorectal meds less than 3 cm, we have frequent microscopic invasion uh, within 10 millimeters from the tumor edge. So we, uh, this, is, this means that uh, a margin of at least five to 10 millimeters is absolutely mandatory to achieve. How can contrast ultrasound be useful also in this, uh, uh, in this particular field? It is useful if we combine COS with fusion. Without fusion, this cannot be done. You see here a case of a fusion of a lesion, a metastatic lesion, with the MRI of the same lesion. Uh, this is the wide area of necrosis achieved uh, with uh, ablation, with microablation. Is the margin of this lesion homogeneously uh, put, uh, located all around or not? We have to analyze it and fusing uh, pre-treatment MRI with post-treatment contrast ultrasound, we can immediately appreciate, as you can see here, that the margins are absolutely good, very good in this area, uh, minimal in this area, not at all existing in this part of the tumor. So before concluding our session, we should reinsert the antenna and enlarge this margin in order to include also here a very good safety halo all around. What about the final assessment of the ablative margins? Nowadays, uh, we, have, we are moving on and on very fast in this field. Uh, I show you an example of the lesion with the uh, contrast ultrasound before, the needle inserted, the excellent uh, uh, result in terms of necrosis demonstrated with CT. But nowadays, we have a very, very powerful software enabling us to fuse in an elastic modality pre treatment and post-treatment CT in order to determine exactly the tumor inside, the safety hill all around, and the necrotic area in blue depicted. In this case, we have absolutely no residual tumor and also no, res no safety halo lacking or, um, or partial in any part of this tumor. COS can be particularly useful when we have to treat lesions which are located in, let's say, delicate or risky areas of our organs. Again, an example in the liver. You see here what is, what is the remaining small liver of this patient who underwent a two-stage hepatectomy. So this is all 
the liver remaining in this poor patient, he has a new lesion in this area exactly where we have a, a vein, which is a part of the only uh, hepatic vein remaining, just one uh, uh, hepatic vein left by the surgeon. So it is absolutely mandatory to perform the treatment adequately, but sparing the vein in order to, and we have to control it during the procedure. You see here, the, the, same, the same lesion uh, visualized with the uh, magnification. At that point, we can uh, introduce a contrast ultrasound, study the lesion, fusing with uh, uh, pre-treatment CT. Uh, this is the uh, antenna introduced, inserted. At that point, we perform the treatment, and every minute of the treatment, we can stop ablation, inject uh, a minimal amount of sonoview to check if there is the dependency of the vein is preserved or not. So step by step, we can we can conclude the treatment. You see here before and after, and if you check, if you if you examine carefully, you see that the vein, the vein remains absolutely open and and patent at the end of the treatment with also this vein adjacent larger vein. So without this uh, uh, step by step control during the treatment, we would not have been very comfortable or very, or very quiet during this kind of ablation. Another lesion, which is ex absolutely adjacent, I would say also against the gallbladder wall. This is the gallbladder. Uh, this patient cannot undergo laparoscopic uh, resection for a series of comorbidities. We have to play all, all our cards with ablation, but it is a risk for the, for the gallbladder. So again, step by step, we control that during the treatment, the gallbladder wall does not get inflamed, inflammatory, or thickened, and the content of the gallbladder lumen remains the same, so that at the end we can achieve an excellent result without any damage to the gallbladder wall. Uh, immediate de detection of a complication. I have to say that nowadays the probability, the percentage of complications for uh, well-performed ablations is really minimal. Uh, the, um, the major complications are in the range of 1.5%, 1, 1 but they may occur. And this is an example of a simple, very simple hepatocellular carcinoma in a patient with a relatively poor coagulation situation, but within the limit uh, universally accepted. So we perform the treatment normally, and you can see here the, the, the treatment while it is, uh, it is performed with the needle inserted and the tip of the needle positioned adequately crossing the tumor. Ablation performed, excellent gas formation, much larger than the size of the lesion before. When we remove the antenna, we start seeing something strange. We re-inject some of you and we see that there, there, is a, there are echoes moving out of the liver, coming from inside. Can you see the bubbles moving up and going around the liver? So this is a, a, a hematoma uh, occurring just in front of our eyes in real time at the very beginning. So we stop and we move immediately in the same room to Combe MCT to confirm the situation. And as you can see here, it is totally confirmed. This is the uh, bleeding coming from the liver capsule, which is confirmed. So immediately embolization, and uh, two hours later, the CT control shows no more bleeding, stop of the bleeding, and the presence of a peripheral peri perihepatic hematoma, no other complications in the, in the liver. Uh, nowadays, there are lots and lots of papers describing the sensitivity and the specificity of a contrast in hand sonography for the incomplete or complete treatment, not only in the hepatic area, but also, for example, in renal uh, tumors. I don't want to comment all these results, but if you, if you have a very quick look at the numbers, you can see that the, percent, the percentages are almost always larger than 90%, and most of them are approximate or really 100%. So now the role of, of contrast of the sound in this field 
is absolutely established. So that the new LIRES uh, uh, algorithm, the new LIRES uh, parameters for ablation include the terms non-viable, equivocal, or viable based on the no lesion enhancement, treatment specific expected enhancement pattern, and so on. So also in the field of the, of the uh, very new LIRADS, we have LIRADS for the ablation uh, situations in which the role of uh, contrast ultrasound is extremely important. But uh, what about other organs? Many other organs. This is a parathyroid adenoma with a PTH very elevated. Before ablation, you see the homogeneous enhancement of the gland. Uh, the laser fibers in laser fiber introduced precisely into the target. Um, one hour after ablation, the same control with contrast ultrasound shows absolutely no vascular no vascularity. And one year later, the PTH was is back to the normal value, and again there is no residual enhancement into the lesion with contrast ultrasound. This is a lymph node, a malignant lymph node from papillary thyroid carcinoma after thyroidectomy and after lymphadenectomy. So th this would require a new surgical operation, which is not so so easy for surgeons after many previous uh, uh, with the, due to the many previous surgical scars. So we perform the ablation. And again, three month follow up shows a reduction in size and disappearance of vascularity. And one year later, with, with contrast of the sound, the lesion is completely avascular and necrotic. So, recommended indications. First of all, complement to contrast enhanced CT or contrast enhanced MRI for the pre treatment staging and for the assessment of the target lesion vascularity. The facilitation of needle positioning in cases of incomplete or poor lesion delineation on an enhanced sonography. The evaluation of the immediate treatment effect after ablation and the guidance for immediate retreatment of a residual and ablated tumor. And finally, the assessment of local tumor progression when follow-up contrast intensity or contrast intensity MRI are contraindicated or not conclusive. These are, in my opinion, the four main goals, the four main aims of uh, contrast intensity in this field of ablation. We, I could say, that we ca cannot get rid of uh, contrast ultrasound in our daily ablations. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Luigi, a wonderful overview of um, the many aspects of using contrast enhanced ultrasound in ablation therapy. Just a couple of questions. Do you do nearly all of your ablations or all of your ablations under ultrasound guidance or with fusion imaging? Uh, we use extensively fusion imaging. Uh, let's say that, for example, for liver ablation, the um, we uh, we move to CT guidance extremely rarely, not more than one two percent of the cases, because with fusion we can overcome all uh, almost all the problems related to the incomplete or partial visualization of the target. So combining ultrasound, contrast enhanced sonography, and fusion, we can solve the problem in more than ninety eight percent of the cases for liver. For kidneys, I would say the percentage is very similar. For superficial organs, as I showed you, is 100%, definitely 100% thyroid, parathyroid, or lymph nodes. In other particular organs or more rare applications of, of sonography, the use of CS is probably limited, but it is increasing also in those particular fields. Okay, and of course, for the patient, it is much better uh, to do the procedure under ultrasound? Definitely, definitely, uh, Paul. Uh, it, uh, you have to think that, uh, for, first of all, we perform nowadays almost all our treatments without general anesthesia in, in deep sedation, of course, with the control of the anesthesiologist, but with simple deep sedation and an ultrasound machine and contrast ultrasound. We work 
sometimes in the combined city room or in the city room. And this is very comfortable because at the end, we can perform immediately also the control with contrast enhanced combined city or contrast enhanced CT. But 95% uh, of the times, what we achieve with contrast ultrasound is confirmed with CT. How many doses do you give of the Sonoview? Does it matter how many times you inject Sonoview during the procedure? <laughs> uh, this answer can, can, can be sometimes incredible for, for, for people listening to us. But uh, we reach the maximum in, in cases of, lesion, of patients with many lesions of 12 injections of uh, Sonoview during the treatment. Of course, not 12 vials. Uh, usually we inject one third or or a half of the vial for single single injections but when you have a patient with two or three or four lesions uh, sometimes all of them critical for location for size and so on you need contrast and we have never had a, the minimal the minimal reaction the minimal problem due to the use of contrast <laughs> ultrasound Okay, thank you very much, Luigi. We'll let you get away now, and thank you for your talk. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much.